Welcome to the first episode, if you will, of a new series on the channel called The Goth Files. And this week's episode is <clears throat> The History of Chanel's Vamp Lipstick. Now, most people are going to say, oh, it's no big a deal, it's a lipstick. This is way more complicated than you remotely ever thought of it being. So I have a lot of notes here, so, you know, if I lick, lick, look down and read something, that's why, because there's no way I can keep all this straight. It's insane. So, to give you a little backstory, in 1994, I was a senior in high school, and by that time I was fully into my goth identity by then, in what we used to call junior high here in the States, what is now called middle school, I had changed over to wearing nothing but black. And that was basically like my mom's worst nightmare, essentially. She wanted me to be like, you know, the pretty little princess and blah, blah, blah. Instead, I was, you know, wearing black and trying to do black eyeliner on my eyes. And at that age, I wasn't very good at it. Nobody is. But that was kind of the thing. So fast forward a couple years. I'm a senior in high school in 1994. And suddenly, all over the news is information about this new shade from Chanel called Vamp. Now, for me, of course, gothic identity, vampire nut, something called Vamp back then was a big deal. Especially since, like, all the alternative makeup and stuff was only appearing around Halloween time. So, Vamp, I was there. So the first thing I did was I ran to... The first place I could think of that had a whole bunch of, like, fashion magazines, which would have been the local bookstore. And so I started digging through these magazines, and I finally came across the wonderful ad for Vamp, which, of course, originally was only the nail polish, but then also became a lipstick. So this here is a ad from the time. It's not the specific first ad I saw. I couldn't find it, but you get the idea of what the ads looked like. And of course the model is wearing both the lipstick and the nail polish. So, you know, I had to have vamp. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The problem was I was living in, you know, small town West Virginia. Nowhere around here carried Chanel in our even, you know, fancier department stores because nobody thought anybody in West Virginia would buy Chanel, I guess. So I had to wait until I could travel like an hour and a half away into Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania before I could actually get my hands on Chanel. So what did I do? I went straight to the makeup counter and bought Chanel Vamp Lipstick and Nail Polish. I do not have the nail polish anymore but I do still have my original lipstick. And I also want to mention that back then, online shopping didn't exist. There was none. I and mean, if there was any, it was like a very, very minuscule things like, you know, tools or, you know, a little bit of like tiny, tiny bit of clothing. This was very still early internet days. So it wasn't like I could just go online and buy Chanel Vamp. So... Basically, because it was so expensive, I think at the time I paid something like $28 for it, which in 1994 was a hell of a lot of money for a lipstick. Um, I only ever wore it for special occasions. I never wore it constantly because I couldn't afford to replace it. It was just too much. So, there's a lot of history regarding the shade, which is... Uh, dual thing. On one hand, it's really funny. On the other hand, it's needlessly complicated and probably also has something to do with the fact that the shade has had some interesting progressions throughout the years. So, because there are so many myths surrounding this shade, I am going to link in the description box a detailed article by a lady named Catherine Luck who wrote this giant expose on the myths and truths surrounding the shade Vamp with Chanel in 2019 on a site called The Delve. So that'll be down in the subscription box. I highly recommend checking it out. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going by the facts stated in her article because it's extremely well researched and I, you know, compared the information that she had put down to her 
sources and things like that, and it's top-notch. So I think this is the closest we can get to the truth which, without talking to the people themselves, which unfortunately some of them are now deceased. So we're going to start with Peter Phillips, who was the creative director of the Chanel makeup line, and he did an interview in 2011 with Chanel's director of makeup creation, Heidi Morowitz. And her time working with Montcoroy, I, I excuse my pronunciations, I'm not the best at pronouncing French. My knowledge of French is basically ballet terms, so I know I've butchered that. But Montcoroy, she worked with Morowitz on the shade for Chanel's 1994 Autumn and Winter Show. And Morowitz recalled... I had seen a photograph in black and white, and in black and white, eyes and nails turned black. I thought maybe we should do something for the nails like that. We had to do it fast, just two days before the show. So, the actual creation of the shade has a myth as well as that was also debunked in the interview. Morwitz clarified that the shade had been mixed in her kitchen, and we also should note that the shade was originally called Rouge Noir, but we'll get to that in a minute. Morowitz stated in the interview, We did this black Rouge Noir in our kitchen, Dominique and myself. Don't ask me how the quality was. We did our pigments ourselves, and very often we did the mixing ourselves. The manicurist said to us, What is this terrible quality that you're giving me here? But we had to do it fast, and two days before the show. And then, in the lab, they made it nice, of course. There's also a myth that Vamp was used in the movie Pulp Fiction for the shade that Uma Thurman was wearing on her fingers. That is totally untrue. Um, the biggest thing is, principal photography for Pulp Fiction began on September 20th, 1993, and lasted for 51 days. That's an entire year before Vamp was even created. So, while it's similar, it is not the same shade, and the idea was even debunked in Morowetz's 2018 obituary in the New York Times. So, anybody that says that Vamp is the shade used in Pulp Fiction, no. Then we get into a little section I'm going to call Discontinued Say What? For a reason that remains a complete mystery that is probably only known by the Chanel marketing team at the time. The shade was discontinued only like a few years after 1994 for basically no apparent reason. There isn't any information online as to why, whether there was some sort of ingredient issue, nothing. Nada, Zippo. So, you know, when it got to be around the time, because I believe it was like 1998, I had decided, well, I really should get another vamp lipstick, but then I couldn't get it. I was like, crap. So then I didn't use it at all, because I was like, well, I'm never going to get another one. So then, you know, you fast forward a few years later into 2003, when Chanel brought back a nail polish called Vamp, but it was a totally different formula, a totally different shade, and they didn't have a lipstick with it. So, back to Chanel's marketing team, Morowetz stated, if we'd listened to a marketing team, we would have never created Rouge Noir. The brand had been split into two different shades, Vamp and Rouge Noir, and as the cut observed in 2015, Rouge Noir is a truer match to the original Cream Vamp before it was discontinued and then re-released. So today, Rouge Noir is Vamp, and Vamp is something else entirely. Then, further down the line in 2015, Chanel launched a Vamp-themed collection called Vamp Attitude, for their holiday collection that had several different nail polishes, an eyeshadow palette, the Rouge Noir lipstick, and another shade, lip toppers, and more. But there is this name issue. When the color was created in American labs, it 
the American Labs were the first to produce it, and they did so under the name Vamp, even though Shame had already been given the name Rouge Noir by the House of Chanel in Paris. <laughs> now, I'm not sure whether the lab marketing team came up with the grand idea to do this, or if the New York office of Chanel was like, oh, let's call this Vamp, and the Paris office had already given it the name Rouge Noir. I have no idea. But that's why there's two different names. So, in America, number 18 was sold as Vamp, and in Europe and the rest of the world, number 18 was Rouge Noir. But, even more complicated, you can't go by the numbers, because all the American changes brought about a completely different numbering system. So, Chanel Rouge Noir lipstick today is known by number 109. And currently, the lipstick is not sold in America, but you can buy the lip liner, nail polish, and mascara in Rouge Noir in America, which doesn't make any bloody sense to me. Vamp in America is currently the color of a wine-colored shimmery nail polish. So, on the right, you have Rouge Noir. On the left, you have the real 100% 1990s Vamp. Now... Granted, Vamp is quite a bit older. It's, you know, it's expired many times over at this point. But there, you can still see differences in the shade. Vamp is slightly darker. Rouge Noir has a slight bit of luminescence. Other than that, it's the same exact shade. So, can you tell the difference on my lips? I really can't. This is like me looking like super close and being extremely nitpicky. I'm sure that some of the luminescence probably does come from the fact that Chanel totally changed some of the ingredients that were used in the 90s. In the 90s, they used a lot of phylates and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, for preservation and so on and so forth. So it's not like we would have the exact same formulas today. Also, um... I believe, now don't quote me on this, but I think most of the Chanel lipsticks are now vegan. So that may also have something to do with it. But I might be wrong on that, don't quote me, but I, I thought I saw that somewhere. So don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, comment down below if you love the shade Vamp or if you'd like to see other videos with this type of content. So till next time, bye!